Hi everyone, Dr. Romani here. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things related to narcissism, narcissistic personalities, difficult toxic people, difficult toxic relationships. Today I'm going to be taking on the issue, a very interesting niche kind of an issue, of your sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is just that fight, flight, or freeze system. That part where you feel like you got to get out of there or you just boom, 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 right? So I'm going to talk about that specifically as it relates to how you deal with narcissistic people or narcissistic abuse. Before I get to that though, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Please hit that subscribe button and join this really robust community. And also you can hit that bell and you'll get notifications. We put up videos almost every day. But I'd also love to hear from you in the comments before I get started here. Have you ever had that experience where you think you're over the narcissist? You run into them and your heart starts racing. Like, what the heck is going on? I thought I was over this. So let's talk about that. This idea I hear from clients often. My heart is still racing when I see this person. I thought I was over it, but maybe I'm not over my narcissistic relationship. This is something I hear quite often. I'll be working with a client or group of clients who've done well, much more healed. Maybe they're even somewhat indifferent to the narcissist. They're living a fuller life. They no longer feel gaslighted. They don't feel silenced or invalidated. In some cases, people may have even moved on into new relationships, new careers, and they feel happy. And then for some reason of bad luck, they run into their narcissist. It could be something like a coincidental sighting at a grocery store. It may be a necessary sighting, someplace like a family wedding. It may be that you see them at a, a work event or I don't know, it might even be something as bizarre as that you're sitting in traffic at a red light and you turn around and they're in the car next to you. Just sheer coincidence. But no matter where it is, you see them and your start, heart starts to race. And it feels like your heart's in your throat. You may feel like you can't catch your breath. You feel sick to your stomach. You may feel dizzy. It's an awful feeling. The moment will pass and maybe, maybe at that moment you're able to duck into a doorway and they don't even see you. You just see them. Or maybe they just keep walking past you even if they do notice you. Your heart keeps racing and then slowly you return back to normal. Then though, psychologically, you start to feel upset and perhaps even angry with yourself. You're thinking, what the hell? I thought I was over this. I thought I was past this whole experience. <clears throat> and this isn't just about intimate relationships. This can even be family members, former bosses, old friends. It can be someone you went no contact with, but as a result, you just couldn't co account for the random coincidence of possibly seeing them in an airport or a train station or just simply walking across the street. You get frustrated thinking to yourself, I did all of this damn work and I'm still not over it. And you might start to feel hopeless. Well, I'm here to offer you a little reassurance. You're actually more over it than you think, but your sympathetic nervous system didn't read the memo. Your narcissist was a source of fear and confusion for years. Maybe in not all cases was it fear of violence, but in some cases I know it was, but just fear. You had fear of saying the wrong thing, fear that you would be invalidated, fear of being gaslighted, fear of being lied to, fear of being betrayed, fear of always feeling confused. These are relationships that are characterized by months, years, and lifetimes spent walking on eggshells. If you actually do feel you're out of the woods psychologically, you may very well be. The cognitive work of narcissistic abuse is a little bit easier. You're able to think reasonably and rationally the usual stuff. You're able to manage expectations, engage in radical acceptance, and with time, you slowly see the pattern that it was, that it is, and it always would be, so you get it but your sympathetic nervous system doesn't catch up so quick. The sympathetic nervous system is our fight, flight, freeze, or bond system. It's that part of us that is mobilized at times of fear to get us to a place of safety. When we see or experience something frightening, the sympathetic nervous system starts. It doesn't stop and say, well, let's think a little bit about radical acceptance and all the rest of it. It sees and processes any kind of dangerous stimulus almost immediately. And the racing heart 
and the other physiological symptoms are part of that mobilization. It's your brain and body kind of doing what they're supposed to. And all of this involves a variety of brain structures, such as the insula, the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the prefrontal cortex. All of these are involved in the processing of fear. This is happening at a primitive level. Now, it can be really demoralizing when you have these strong sympathetic reactions, because as I said, many people think that this mean, their heart racing means that they're not over it. Don't worry. It's just a signal that this was once frightening. In some ways, when you run into your narcissist, it's sort of a combination of post-traumatic stress and a phobia. They're often not something to be afraid of anymore. Like for example, when we think of phobias, a person afraid of dogs isn't just afraid of snarling and dangerous dogs, but they're sometimes even afraid of tiny little teacup dogs. The fear of dogs get generalized and it's not rational. Your poor nervous system is just doing its job, but it generalizes, right? So I don't want you to perceive your racing heart as a signal that you have not healed. If you really have healed and are feeling more indifferent, the fact that you got out of one of these relationships is nothing short of heroic. Now, trauma researchers and trauma clinicians have done some have great suggestions for how to manage these moments these traumatically activating moments when they happen. In a classical example, trauma researchers often suggest connecting to your body so you can bring down the fear. So let's say you see your narcissist and your pulse starts skyrocketing. Find your pulse, find it at your wrist, find it like at your, um, your neck, put your hand on your beating heart, okay? And count the beats. Just pay attention to your body, count the beats, okay? What you're gonna see is that now you're really connecting to your body and in such a focused way that your heart rate actually comes down. It's, it's something we, it's like sort of a mechanism of biofeedback. And at that point, instead of feeling like something is happening to you, you actually start connecting with your bodily response. And you might then sort of denature that fear response. It's very simple, but it's very accessible to do this. So if you do have that chance encounter with your narcissist, find a quiet spot, go to a restroom, a private room, someplace you might be able to tuck away and get a moment to connect with yourself and connect with your body. Like I said, just take that pulse. And before you know it, you might feel your body relax again. Basically, what you're doing is mindfully monitoring yourself, just turning inward and giving yourself a minute. It's a simple gesture of self-compassion. Let's face it, you never got any compassion from that narcissist in your life. You're still learning how to be compassionate to yourself. So you need to step up to the plate and be your own compassionate person. You need to learn that. And again, much like a phobia, just like with that little teacup dog, the fear of narcissists can generalize. People may find themselves having strong reactions to any new person who comes into their life that might also have a narcissistic personality style. They may pe meet people who are braggy and arrogant or difficult, entitled, antagonistic. And you might find that you have an almost disproportionate reaction to their grandstanding. Again, it makes sense. Fear responses generalize. At some level, all you can do is take this as a life lesson and a wake up call to distance from this new difficult person. I sometimes notice this happening in like public places. Like I'll be in a store or a business and a difficult entitled person will come in and start yelling at a manager or a clerk. And at those times, personally, I actually find that my heart starts racing and I feel sick. I know my own personal history with this. So I understand why this happens to me at those times. And at those times, depending on the nature of the situation, I'll either leave the situation, I've been known to leave full grocery carts, I will leave, or I'll do that monitoring technique I just told you about, or somehow distract myself, I'll play a game on my phone. On those days, to the degree it is possible, I will find a moment then to recalibrate in other ways. Instead of viewing this as, I'm a broken person because I can't stand watching people like, behave like entitled jerks, instead, 
This can be reframed and I can take the stance of recognizing how my life history has shaped me in a way that these situations are hard for me to watch or be a part of. I am not going to pathologize myself because someone else is acting like a jerk. That's on the jerk, not me. We are so used to judging people who get angry or get destabilized when they see entitled toxic people. Instead of that, instead of wondering that, like judging the person who's being affected, we should wonder why we accept toxic behavior. Listen, some people might tell me I need to grow a thicker skin, to which I'd say, you know what? My skin is plenty thick, but these situations do affect me and I'm okay with that. That's the acceptance piece. And I don't need anyone else to get on board with it. I'm okay with it. Now, so many people in narcissistic relationships remain afraid that they will be stuck forever in fear. These nervous system responses can be disempowered by connecting with them and understanding them. It can also be useful to talk about them, perhaps in your own therapy, in a support group, or with a trusted friend. I have worked with countless clients who have said that, honestly, just the mere sight, for example, of a red car that's the same kind of car that their former partner drove is enough for them to feel like they need to pull over for a minute and catch their breath. And you know what? That's okay. It doesn't mean you're damaged, doesn't mean you're stuck, and it doesn't mean you're still in love. It means your nervous system learned long ago that this person was not good for you and it learned to be afraid. Interestingly, your sympathetic nervous system figured it out a lot sooner than your mind did. Your nervous system was telling you to get out a long time ago, even when you were in the relationship, your heart was racing, but your mind kept making up justifications. So your thinking was, your thinking, your mind, your rational brain was the last part to get it. And then once you got it, you got it. But your nervous system is more primitive, so it takes a minute. Your body and nervous system are actually on your side because they do want to keep you safe. Sometimes they try to keep you too safe. And so you need to create an alliance of brain, body, nervous system, heart, and soul. By doing that, it can help you heal and be kinder to yourself in your process of recovery and survival. I have to tell you, I remember years ago, there was somebody who was particularly narcissistically cruel to me. And I was driving in a part of town where th this person lives. And there was somebody who resembled this person to a T walking along the street. This was a relationship that's years, 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 years in the past. I remember I felt like my heart was going to explode and it was at my throat. I was in this sort of odd intersection where I could pull into a parking lot. And I was actually with other people, but I was the driver. And I remember almost like I was going to get myself into an accident because I was so trying to study the face of that person, trying to determine if it was that person. And it would be irrelevant because it was a busy street. It was a busy intersection. This person wouldn't have seen me. And I think I actually might have been driving a different car than I was at the time. And so I remember pulling over and the people in the car like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I made up some silly excuse about how I needed, I, I didn't know the direction. So I just needed to check something. They kind of got exasperated with me but I honestly thought my heart was gonna explode out of my chest. Because of the nature of the intersection, I was able to get a better look at this person. It wasn't the same person. But I remember one of my initial, ang in, uh, initial reactions was anger. I'm like, girl, seriously? This is still bothering you after all these years. And in that moment, I reflected on other professional relationships, you name it, where I've run into those people in conventions and my relationship with them was 20 years ago that we'd had the problem in our re professional relationship. And I'd see them in a convention hall and like a kid in high school being bullied, I'd turn around and try to walk another direction. Fight, flight, freeze, or as Pete Walker brilliantly says, fawn. Like either you're going to go and praise them or you're going to get the heck out of Dodge or freeze and hope that the, the earth opens, you, opens up and takes you in. But here's the bottom line. I'll never forget that day and ever since. Whenever I talk with clients, and this has happened to me many times, I hear them because they always think, I'm losing my mind. Please don't tell me I'm still in love with this person. Oh, well, hell no. You're not in love with this person. But your nervous system is just doing its job and saying, please, sweetie, I need to keep you safe. Danger, danger, danger. It's a different kind of danger. You know you're over it. I did. I was like, I honestly don't care what happens to this person. But I actually, in some ways, 
pat my nervous system on the back and said, thanks for keeping me safe. My heart rate returned. My passengers were still a little confused. And I'm like, oh, now I know the right way. And I was perfectly fine once the car started driving you again. I wish the same for you. And again, don't let that little heart racing always make you think that you're in danger if indeed you are over this person. Again, would love to hear your stories too in the comments. And thanks again as always for tuning in. Bye.